So if you started using Framer, but you're making some of the biggest mistakes ever. Don't worry, in this video, I'm collecting all of these mistakes for you and showing you ways around them. After watching this, you'll be sure that your Framer sites are better than they were before, to say the least. My name is Nandi, this is Framer University, and let's get started. So this is going to be a super value packed video, so make sure that drop a like on this video as soon as I mention a mistake that you did not know about. So let's get started with the first mistake, which is actually overshooting corner radius when animating between different variants. So what the hell is overshooting corner radius? Well, it is what you see right here. As you can see, if I preview this interaction, you can see the left example is animating the corner radius a little bit differently compared to the right one. So if I scale them out just slightly, you can also see it better that the right one is just animating smoothly, the left one is almost instant and it's just acting a little bit weirdly. So you could say that Nandi you probably have a different transition setting on the left component and that's why it animates differently. Well, we can check that. Let's see what is the transition here. Transition one second. It's pretty much should be like one second, like it's it's not instant, one second, okay. Uh, let's see the right one. It is going to be one second. What a surprise. What is the difference then? Well, basically the difference is, as I said, overshooting the corner radius. So the left one uh, has an overshot corner radius. What does that mean? Well, basically, if you take a look at here on the default primary variant, we can see that the corner radius is 1000 and on the hover state it is zero. So we are basically animating from 1000 corner radius to zero corner radius. On the other example, we basically animate from 20 pixel radius on the default primary variant to the zero pixel radius on the hover variant. And so basically when you want to make sure that your corner radius is animated nicely and smoothly without any weird behavior, you know, similarly to what we see right here, you have to make sure that you're not overshooting corner radius. But how can you make sure that you're not doing that? Well, you always have to make sure that you're calculating scientifically the value, the corner radius value, that means fully rounded corners for that specific element. How do you calculate that? Well, you basically grab the smaller side of your element. In this case, this button is 40 pixel in height. That is the smaller side. And we have to divide it by two. So in this case, 40 divided by two, it is going to be 20. So that's why I have 20 pixel radius for the fully rounded version of this. As you can see, anything over this corner radius value will not give us any official difference over 20, it's it's not gonna be anything. So that's why it's it doesn't really work for us if we set 100 and animate from that, because I'm gonna show you something on a little timeline just to make sure that you understand it a little bit better. So on the default, we've at 1000 pixel radius and we are animating to not 20, but zero. So we wanna animate from fully rounded corners to no rounded corners. And we give it one second time. So it takes us one second for us to go from fully rounded corners to not rounded corners. At least that's what we think. But in reality, what happens is that the visual difference that we're going to be able to see is the transition from 20 pixel to zero. Because we already discussed it, over 20, it's not going to give us any visual difference. So 20 is somewhere right here, really close to zero on this uh, little illustration. So probably somewhere right here, we're going to have 20. And if you think about it, then most of the transition time will be spent on something that we cannot actually see. Animating this value from 1000 to 900 to 800 and so on and so forth, it's not going to be visible for us. So this time that we have right here between 20 and 0, this is actually going to be 1 50th of the full transition time, which is actually going to be 0 0.02 seconds and that's why it almost feels like an instant transition compared to the other one where it actually is being animated from 20 to 0 where the full visual difference or the full visual change can be dedicated to that one second transition on the left it's going to be weird jumpy instant yeah 
just bad. Okay, so the next mistake is not defining the current cursor for different interactive elements. So as you can see, on this example, we have two cards. Be prepared because each of these have a really, really sick hover effect. Okay, that was a little bit laggy. Let's try it again. Yeah, so it has a really, really, really nice hover effect, both of them. However, there is a really, really uh, important difference between these two cards. The left one does not have a link, so it's not clickable. So when I hover over this, I shouldn't really see a pointer cursor. And if my screen recorder is recording my cursor correctly, you shouldn't see a pointer cursor, you should see my default cursor. And that is correct, because if we, on the other hand, have a pointer cursor when we hover over an element, we're gonna you know, assume that it is clickable. And yes, it is indeed clickable, it has a link, so it is clickable. And when I click, we're gonna be taken to framer.university by the way, it's a website that you should maybe visit. Um, but yeah, basically that's what you have to pay attention to. And if you ask Nandi, how do I make sure that the right cursor is set? You just have to, again, first of all, think about what is the behavior of the element? Is it clickable? Is it not? And then you go within the component or just select whatever component you wanna change the cursor on. And then you're gonna just go to the right panel and define the cursor right here. So if it's not added like this, you can just click the plus next to cursor, web cursor, and you can define any uh, cursor right here, as you can see, but mainly we're just switching between the normal and the pointer one. Again, if it's interactive, use pointer. If it's not, use uh, the regular default cursor. And that's it. Okay, so the next one is not matching transition settings on nested components. So why do we have to match transition settings on nested components? Well, let me show you this example. This is a simple accordion stack or whatever with you know, a few frequently asked questions. And if we click one of these or the other ones, we will see that it's nicely opening up and closing when I click on any of these little accordions. However, there is a small mistake that you might not even notice. Let me just record this with my screen recorder and play it back really slowly. So as you can see, I just took a screen recording and if I play it really slowly, uh, just let me know if you see the, see the issue. Here is a really, really visible. You can see that when I open this accordion here, the opening animation of the individual accordion is faster compared to the other accordions moving away. And that's why they are overlapping like this. And you could say that that's, that's not a big deal. Well, that is a big deal. If I see this on your website, I'm going to say, okay, you're a noob. So you have to fix this. How do we fix this? We just make sure that the wrapping component, so that component that wraps all accordion components, has the same transition setting that we set on the individual accordion components within. So to fix this, I'm just gonna take a look at these different transition settings that we have here. Probably this one right here is much longer. No, actually this is, uh, this is uh, shorter, so it's 0.2. And then on the accordion within, we're gonna have something larger. So yeah, it's 0.7 here. And that's where they're not matching. And they might have, by the way, the same time, but different bounce values. And that might also cause it to be a little out of sync. So in this case, we can just set both of them to maybe 0.5 and zero bounce. Here as well, 0.5 and zero bounce. And now if we take a look at this final transition or effect, you're gonna see that now they're not overlapping at all. And it is just a much nicer, smoother experience to open these uh, down. And yeah, we no longer have this little mistake on our website. Next mistake is the navigation alignment type of thing. Many people, uh, they just create a frame for the navigation. They put a logo on the left they put some links in a stack in the center, and then they put a little button on the right. And what they do to place them like this, they just set the navigation stack to space between, because if they have it on start, for example, you know, everything will start at the left side of the navigation and they will be placed uh, you know, right next to each other with this gap between uh, each of them. However, space between you know, has this nice uh, you know, distribute setting where each of these elements are distributed equally uh, around or across the width of this stack. So it works really well. However, you might not even notice it, but 
The problem with this is that now these navigation links are not really centered. So they are slightly off center pushed to the left side. We can just calculate the distance on the right and then move this distance to the left and you're going to see that it is not equal. So how do we fix this? Well, it's going to be really, really simple. We just have to somehow make sure that the element right here on the right and the element on the left has the same width because the width changes that we have on the left element on the right element causes this uh, misalignment on the center element. Because now here this, it pushes the navigation a little bit to the left because of the bigger uh, width that we have on the button. So the fix is really simple. I select the logo first on the left element, press Option, Command and Enter on my keyboard. This wraps it in a stack. Now you can see it looks a little bit weird, but don't worry, it's gonna be great. I set the stack to distribute start, so the logo starts at the left side of the stack, so it's nicely placed back to the left side of the navigation. And then I do the same thing with the button. I wrap it in a stack, Option, Command and Enter. And again, instead of distribute center, we're gonna have not distribute started because that would put it to the left side of the stack. We will place it to the right side with distribute end. And now you can see that both of these have the same width because both of them are now filling up the available space. And then now the links can be nicely centered right here. So if I duplicate this just to compare the two, what we had before, and now we can see that here it was slightly off center to the left and now here on the fixed version on top we can see that the navigation links are nicely centered on our website again a really small detail but yeah if we pay attention to these small things they can add up and you know create an almost perfect website by the way if you want to grab some of these elements or components that i'm showing right here in this project file you can go down to the description and just remix this project it's going to basically duplicate the same project that I'm seeing right here onto your framework account for completely free and you can mess around with it. So the next mistake that we're facing right here is not setting viewport height for hero sections. So if we preview this side that we have here, you can see it looks a little bit weird because this hero section here on the top doesn't take up the full height of my current viewport. So it basically causes me to see some additional content on the bottom, maybe a little bit more than what I would want to see. So for these hero sections, we, use, we usually use VH as a unit. So VH is basically viewport height, and we can define like a percentage value, maybe like 100 VH would basically mean 100% of the given viewport. So we can try 100 VH by just sending the hero again to viewport and then 100. And now if you take a look at this, you're going to see that if I resize this viewport height, the hero section is nicely adapting to it, uh, which is, you know, a really great behavior. And this is actually what we want on most websites. However, if you want to still, you know, see a little bit of the section below that, you can maybe set this to a little bit lower value, maybe 90 with H. So it's going to basically take up 90% of the given viewport. And then you can see that, okay, we can probably scroll down further to see some additional content on this website. So yeah, just make sure to use VH units for your hero sections or other elements that might need these dynamic height, uh, you know, that is dependent on the viewport height. And the last mistake that I want to cover in this video is not disabling scroll when we have a full height navigation on our website. So if we preview this, you can see that this navigation now is not really showing any links for us. We can open it down right here with this little button and we can now see that, okay, this is a full size navigation. It takes up 100% of my given viewport. So I can click these links here and we're good. However, if you pay close attention again, we will notice that I can scroll down on this website. I don't know if you can see it, the navigation is slightly uh, see-through, so you should see that I'm actually scrolling here and also the scroll on the right should tell you that uh, we are actually scrolling. So yeah, this is not really great. We don't want to scroll when this is open. So how can we prevent this scrolling behavior when this component is in the opened variant? How do we do that? Well, we can use the scroll stopper component from the Famer University website. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to Famer dot university slash resources 
and you're gonna use this little search bar right here to basically type in scroll stopper. Here you're gonna look at this resource and then on the top you're gonna find the copy component button and you can simply paste it into your framer sites uh, or framer site by pressing command and the Wii. And you're gonna see that now it is placed within this hero section and you can see it's really, really small. It's basically just a purple dot here because this component doesn't have any visual like effect or it's, it's, you cannot even see it. It's just adds the effect to your website, which is actually blocking the scroll. So I can just comment an X on this component. So now it's disappeared from the uh, hero section. We actually don't want to add it to the hero section because then we cannot scroll on the website when we land on it. So what we have to do is we have to paste it within the navigation. Because if you think about it, if I place this within the primary variant of the navigation and I make sure that it is set to absolute positioning so it doesn't take up any space, I can also change the best to zero, but again, it's not gonna you know, show, so you're not gonna see it. And on the primary variant, which is actually the open variant, we can set the block scroll to yes, because when this variant is displayed on my website, I wanna make sure that I can no longer scroll. So block scroll should be yes here on the properties panel of this component. However, when the closed variant of the navigation is displayed on the website, I wanna make sure that the stop scroll component is no longer blocking the scroll. So I can set it to no on this variant. So now if I take a look at this in the preview, you can see that I can still normally scroll when the closed variant is showcased here on this website. And when I click this to open it down, I can no longer scroll. Let me just show you, here is my touchpad. I'm scrolling and it's not scrolling anymore. Really, really great. So yeah, feel free to use the scroll stopper, free component built by Freemium University for you. So yeah, that's it for this little video. I really do hope that it was helpful. Make sure to comment down in the description how many of these were new to you. Uh, because yeah, I wanted to see how valuable this video was. And yeah, uh, also make sure to go into the description. I'm gonna have another like little video link there because this is actually the second part uh, of the of another video where I was actually also showcasing some mistakes for framers. So you might also want to see that. And yeah, just let me know even if I should continue making these um, as like a series showcasing more and more framer mistakes. Yeah, um, that's it for this video. Again, make sure to like this, subscribe for more, and. I'm going to see you in the next one.